Hello, welcome to the Microsoft Intune for Education Deployment Workshop. My name is Chris Kunze. I'm a program manager for the Intune for Education product group. This is module seven, management, reporting, and support. In this module, I'll go over the device actions that can be taken from Intune for Education and what group admin is and how it can help you distribute workloads in your org. Afterward, I'm gonna walk you through device actions and reporting in Intune for Education. Then I will show you additional reporting in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. And finally, I'll go over the support for Intune and we'll walk you through a demo of opening a case. In the upcoming walkthrough, one of the areas I will cover is device actions. There are currently seven different device actions that will allow you to restart, sync, rename, delete, reset, or locate, for iOS only, a device. There are two types of reset, factory reset and autopilot reset. Factory reset will remove the device from Intune and remove all the personal data and settings from the device. The user will be brought back to the Autobox experience or UBI. Autopilot reset will remove all personal data and settings from the device, but will keep the device enrolled in Intune. Users will be brought back to the login screen. Another feature I'll show you in the upcoming walkthrough is group admins. Group admins are another group of users, perhaps school level administrators, that are assigned in Intune for education and have permission to manage school devices and apps for that group only. When they open the portal, their view will be scoped to that group of users or devices. The group admins have a lot of rights, but are scoped only to those users or devices in that group. In Intune for Education, we have reporting areas like groups, devices, users, and apps. In addition, we have tenant-wide reports that can be accessed from reports. While we're going through the different reports, I'll point out areas where we can perform the actions on devices managed by Intune, such as Sync, Restart, and Wipe. I will start by navigating to the apps. The initial list of apps shows only some of the apps. It shows the apps that are both assigned and the ones that are not assigned. This list can be filtered to only show the assigned apps by clicking on Assigned, All button, selecting Yes, and clicking Apply. Now I see a list of only the assigned apps. The app I'm going to focus on is the Microsoft Edge desktop app. When I drill into it, I see that it has been successfully installed 12 times. This is a little deceptive since it does report successful for every device user combination. I can, of course, see the group that the app is assigned to, and I can see the status details of the installs. Note the top sentence. This report shows the install status of apps for users who have logged in on any device. I will move on to users. The user I will focus on is Latasha Pratt. When I drill down into Latasha's account, I can see her basic student information and what groups she's a member of. The basic student information is populated by School Data Sync, which was discussed briefly in Module 2. If I click Recent Check-ins, I get a lot of useful information on Latasha. First, I can see all the devices that Latasha has recently signed into and when. In addition, I can see all the apps and settings that should be applied to Latasha based on the device she is signed into. This is incredibly useful when troubleshooting why Latasha may or may not be receiving a particular app or setting. It will also display errors. The device that Latasha signed into does not have Wi-Fi, so the Wi-Fi profile I tried to push errored out. The Devices page is similar to what I saw in Users, except I get a list of devices. Notice when I select a device, the device actions, Sync, Restart, Rename, Autopilot Reset, Factory Reset, Locate, and Delete appear. I can perform these actions on one or many selected devices. I will select all the devices that start with Elementary School and click the Restart action to restart them all. A restart command will now be sent to each of the devices, and after a short period of time, they will restart. I will now select a device and drill down further into it. On the Properties page, some very basic information about the device is provided. The Device Actions page will show all the actions sent to the device. The Recent Check-ins page is similar to the one associated with the user that we saw earlier. This will show all the users who have recently signed into the device 
and the expected apps and settings. Moving on to groups will give a slightly different perspective. We have seen this page previously when assigning apps and settings, but now we will focus on the actions and reporting aspects. Since this is a device group, I can see a list of the devices in this group by clicking on Devices. I can perform the same actions as before on one or more of the devices in this group, but I also have the ability to select them all. For now, the limit is 100 devices at a time. We can also choose another group to be the administrator of this group. This is the group admin feature we discussed earlier in this module. Finally, I can view all the events that affected this group, who initiated them, and when. The last area I'm going to show you is reports. One of the key reports is the inventory report. This will give you an all-up view of all Windows devices and iPads. Plus, the list is downloadable. The Device Action section is a list of device actions initiated and their status. Remember, device actions can only be completed if the device checks in with Intune for Education, so some actions may be pending or even failed. The last report, and probably one of the most useful for troubleshooting purposes, is the Settings Error Report. If a device or user is part of multiple groups that set the same settings, Intune will not be able to determine which settings should be applied, so neither of the conflicting settings will be applied. The Settings Error Report is a list of current setting errors and the groups affected. I can drill down into each of the conflicts, see what groups are affected, what settings, and the impacted devices and users. This concludes the Device Management and Reporting in Intune for Education walkthrough. The next walkthrough will show you some of the reporting options in Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Under Devices, Monitor is where many of the reports reside. Assignment status will give you the status of all the configuration profiles to quickly see the number of errors, conflicts, pending, and succeeded. If you are using BitLocker to encrypt your devices, the encryption report will give you information on each device and the encryption status. The last report I'm going to show in Monitor is enrollment failures. In this tenant, we are blocking the enrollment of personal devices. Therefore, we are seeing a number of failures when Allison tried to enroll a personal device. This ends the first part of Module 7. In the next part, I will go over support options in Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center and how to open a case.